Imagine someone comes into your bedroom, they cover your mouth and your nose while you're sleeping. It's gonna prevent you from breathing. Your body would wake you up in a shock and you're gonna be gasping for breath. But then you fall back to sleep and then 30 minutes later, it happens again. Now imagine this happening 10 times every single night. Well, this is practically the same as having sleep apnea. Sleep apnea is more common than you might think and approximately 1 billion people around the world suffer from it. And a lot of these people don't even realize that they have it. Sleep apnea is different from snoring. Let's compare the two sounds. On this side, we have regular snoring. The breathing is easy, nothing unusual about this. And then on this side, we have sleep apnea. And as you can hear, after a few snoring sounds, they stop breathing. This is the dangerous part. It's that scary pause where your tongue and the soft palate of your throat cut off your airway and you'll literally stop breathing. It might even just be for a second and sometimes you'll do it and you don't even realize it. But this is probably happening over and over again through the night. And this can cause some serious health conditions. And if you've ever wondered why you wake up feeling groggy, moody, so tired when you swore you went to bed early, sleep apnea might be the cause. And I'm gonna tell you how you can find out if you have sleep apnea and what you can do to treat it. But first, it is important to understand a little bit about it. So why does sleep apnea happen? Well, one of the reasons can be from the tongue dropping into the back of your throat. And this blocks your airways so oxygen can't get in and it's this trapped carbon dioxide that forces your brain to wake you up. And one of the reasons why this is a big problem is that it leads to something called fragmented sleep. So when your body is trying to get into deep sleep, if you're being constantly woken up, even for just a moment, it's preventing you from all of the amazing benefits from sleep. And when you stop breathing during these apneas, your blood oxygen levels drop, even if it's just for a few seconds. This is a big no-no for your body. As low oxygen causes your heart rate to spike, your blood pressure to rise, and also it messes with your body's chemistry, making it easier even harder to sleep peacefully. And all of this leads to daytime sleepiness, which affects every aspect of your life. You know that feeling when you're dragging yourself through the day, just feeling like an absolute zombie. If you're waking up feeling so tired, like you haven't slept a wink, maybe you have headaches, maybe you have dry mouth, and you're just feeling generally awful, these are the telltale signs of sleep apnea. And all of this has a knock-on effect of your mood as well. It's also been known to cause depression due to the constant interruptions and the stress that this puts on your body. Untreated sleep apnea puts you at a risk for lots of serious health conditions such as hypertension, diabetes, heart disease, even stroke. And these health problems in turn can further mess with your sleep, causing even more sleep disruptions in the future, messing with your sleep quality and your overall well-being. If it sounds like you have this, don't worry, as the tips I'm going to give you can really help you overcome it. And the good news are it's not all doom and gloom. There are so many treatments out there such as lifestyle changes, CPAP, I'll explain what that is in a minute, therapy, and so much more. I have to also say this video is for educational purposes. So if you think that you have sleep apnea, please consult your own healthcare provider so they can do a full health assessment on you and provide direct access to the care that you need. But if you don't have access to a doctor, there are a few self-help diagnosis tools that you can use if you wish to, but I do recommend seeing a doctor if you think you have it. But there are some other things that you can do if you're interested. And three of those are questionnaires, home tests, and mobile apps. So sleep apnea screening questionnaires. These questionnaires ask you about your snoring and your sleep habits. Do you have daytime sleepiness? They'll ask you to ask your partner or whoever sleeps next to you. Do you ever find yourself waking up gasping for breath? And the Epworth sleepiness scale. The other thing is the home sleep tests. These are portable at-home devices that you wear overnight and they monitor your breathing and oxygen levels. They're not as comprehensive obviously as a sleep study in a sleep lab, but they can be helpful. The other thing is more mobile apps. There's so many apps out there that can help you track your sleep, such as Whoop, Apple Watches, and Aura Ring, that's what I use. And they will actually link with your phone and they can flag up and tell you if you've had an episode where you didn't breathe. But like I said, it shouldn't be used as a substitute for a proper diagnosis. So treatments. 
So one of the first steps is making some lifestyle changes. Keeping a healthy lifestyle through diet and exercise really reduces how bad the sleep apnea is. As we mentioned before, the extra weight puts pressure on your neck. So that double chin, when you lie down and relax, the weight presses down on your airway, causing it to block and cuts off your breathing. Of course, quitting, smoking and vaping, this puts extra added pressure, unnecessary extra added pressure on your breathing. If you think you have sleep apnea or it's been diagnosed and you smoke or you vape, this is your first hurdle immediately to get over. Switch to nicotine patches, gums. There's even spray that you can put under your tongue. I saw a friend of mine using the other day. Hypnosis, whatever it is, please stop smoking, stop vaping. Do your body a massive favor. It's still crazy to me that I see young, smart, professional people nipping outside for a fag. What's that all about? Now for some people, sleep apnea is worse when they're laying on the back. There's a few remedies you can try for this. And one of them I've heard and actually seen some articles going around even the NHS put out an article try sewing a tennis ball into the back of your pajamas so it stops you from lying on your back don't know how effective that is I'll have to check out some studies but you can try it otherwise try some pillows wedge one behind your back stop you from rolling over. Next is one of the most effective treatments for sleep apnea is a CPAP machine. Now it isn't as scary as it sounds. CPAP means continuous positive airway pressure and it's a mask that goes over your nose or your mouth and nose and it provides a continuous stream of air so it basically keeps your airways open so your body doesn't feel the need to gasp for air because you have this continuous stream of positive airway pressure. The side effects from sleep apnea are way scarier than the CPAP machine, so don't be put off by it. So if you've tried everything else, you've been diagnosed for it, you're on the wait list for one, when you get it, definitely don't be afraid of it. It's gonna be so much better for your health. Let me know if you've tried one in the comments below, I'd love to hear. Now, another option is mouth gadgets. These are custom-made devices that fit into your mouth. Now you put them in warm water and then you mold it around your teeth, like a boxer's mouth guard. They help reposition the jaw and the tongue, so it keeps your airway open. But it can be uncomfortable, and if you have a sensitive of gag reflex it's going to be very difficult for you to wear and it might take some getting used to it also doesn't fix the problem if you have a heavier set neck and it's your lower airway that is causing the blockage rather than your upper airway in severe cases where you've tried everything else there are surgery options such as removing excess tissue from your throat and repositioning the jaw to alleviate the symptoms but for this if you haven't tried the lifestyle changes yet i would definitely start there before you go to something so severe as surgery but i wanted to share you with it anyway beyond medical interventions there are some things you can do to improve your overall sleep quality which can help improve mild sleep apnea such as avoiding heavy meals before bedtime establishing a regular sleep schedule and creating a relaxing bedtime routine which will really promote your sleep quality if you think you have sleep apnea it's really important to see a doctor for a proper diagnosis if you want to know how to fall asleep fast i suggest watching this video next you might learn some tips you've never tried before